forest to see Miss G. She lives in a house that is mostly green, except for the chimney and windows and walls, and one or two places just down the halls, and swill with rabbits and newts and snails, and fat little puppies that wag their tails, and a whale and a tiger and elephants too. Well, maybe not elephants. Hi. Do you like to fold paper? Good. Because we have a very special lady here today who's an expert in origami. And she's going to show us a lot of interesting things she's made and how to do some of them. But first, I wanted to show you a nice picture I got in the mail from my friend Mildred Blackstock up in Orange, New Jersey. And it's a picture that she did of Aurora. And she likes to do pictures on pieces of old sheet and then paste them onto cardboard and color them with special colors. Do you like that, Faye? Yeah. I do, too. And I think it's especially amazing because she never has seen Aurora in real life. She just knows he's sort of green. And so she made him lots of interesting colors sitting on a branch of berries that I know he would like. Aurora the Parrot by Mildred Blackstock from Orange, New Jersey. I like to get my mail every day because there are always interesting letters in it and sometimes pictures and sometimes boxes. And one day I got my mail and here was this box all wrapped up in paper. And I opened it and it was a real surprise package. Look at all those things in one box. And they're from my friend, Mrs. Truett, the origami lady. And she said she'd be very happy to come and show us how to do some of these things. But she sent me a whole box full of things in the mail so I could see how fascinating they were. What do you like, Robert? You see things in here that are from nature? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever done any of this, Faye? Yes. You want to help get things out? What do you think that is? Butterfly. Right. And how about that one? Um, bird. Right. And you know what special kind of bird it is? Mm -hmm. A black seagull. Oh. A seagull, right. It has black tips on its wings. And all of these are done with just paper and folding. So. I think when we go over to meet Mrs. Truitt, she can show us how to do some of the simple things. I know it takes a long time to learn to do the complicated things. But I hope, she, I hope she'll show us a lot of nature things, because I like the birds, the crickets, the frogs, the lobster. Isn't he neat, Robert? <laughs> and, and the boxes are sort of nice, too. When I was little, I think I did learn how to fold a box or a picture frame, or one of those things you can pinch people's noses with. Did you ever, did you ever make one of those? <laughs> well, would you like to go over and meet Mrs. Truett? Okay. Laura, you want to come over and meet Mrs. Truett? She might even have a paper parrot. <laughs> Welcome to Hodge Lodge. Thank you. <laughs> to be These here. are my friends Faye and Robert. Hi. <laughs> and well, can we talk about this first and then we can uh, okay. take it down and make room for something else? Well, um, this is oh, well, a there was tissue paper butterfly. Uh, almost like one that was in the box. <laughs> well, it is. And. Um, I don't know how much you know about origami, but well, it's... Start at the beginning, <laughs> because we don't know. It's <laughs> paper folding, and you try to do it without scissor cutting, and you can use all kinds of paper. Don't limit yourself on the kind of You paper. don't have to have one of those special kits. That, no, uh, definitely not. A lot of folds, I use typing paper, wrapping paper. Who invented it? Mm, I think most people agree that the Chinese originally, mm -hmm. and of course I think the Japanese are the best right now. Yeah. And that's, this whole setup you have here is an oriental, has an oriental feeling of oriental characters on the base. Oh <laughs> yes, well I like oriental things, well. but you know, I, 
lots of people do paper folding. The Spanish people. I have books in German, French. Well, let's get some nature things up here, because you know us. <laughs> That's what we like the best. <laughs> and everything looks so real That's that uh, I don't think Robert and Fay will have any trouble identifying them. Let me take that. the bouquet away. Now, the uh, <laughs> seashell is folded from a square of paper, no cutting. Now, the little crab is folded from a rectangle. There is some cutting on that. You got a big crab, too. Yes, What's I made that mostly to show that you can enlarge upon them, <laughs> use them for uh, window displays, all kinds of different displays if you want something large. And it's true to nature, too. It has ten legs. Sometimes when you see artwork, it doesn't really look <laughs> well, like the... Uh, you with know, origami, you can start with a very simple shape. It can be very easy, but you can enlarge upon it and make something that's really intricate. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And it's not strictly a children's art. Adults, many adults, do paper folding. And you teach a lot, don't you? Yes. All ages? All ages, from <laughs> kindergarten up to senior citizens. My goodness. The libraries, I do a lot of teaching at the libraries and the public schools. And that's the way to really learn more, is when you go out to teach somebody else. You learn. Uh, <laughs> kids have given me some ideas. <laughs> well, let's uh, lay the crabs down. And how did you get started? Well, I've been doing it for quite a few years. I just liked oriental things, and I think it was just naturally that I gave it a try, mm -hmm. became fascinated. And here's something I didn't know about before. You can make things that move. Can you recognize that, Faye? Yeah. What is it? Dog. <laughs> Touch his nose very gently. Oh. <laughs> That's the naughty dog. The naughty dog. Mm -hmm. He nods his head. He also can shake his head. <laughs> I never saw a variation of origami like that. And you have some other things that will do tricks too, don't you? Oh Where's yes. Where's that? Mm. The well, bird that feeds her feeds her baby. Oh, here she is. This model. Faye, can can Faye try that? Hold the nest and grasp the end of the tail and lift it up. Now that's a newer model that comes from Japan. That's folded from one square of paper, a duplex paper that has color on each side. There's no cutting. It's the mother feeding the baby chick. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's adorable. It's just as cute as it can be. Can Robert try it, Faye? Sure. What did, you, what did you use for the bill? Is that just a, a point of the paper? Just a point. Mm. In fact, that's how most origami is derived at, is by how many points you can get from a piece of paper. Mm. Now, you not only use squares, you use rectangles, all kinds of um, triangles, octagons. You like that action, Robert, huh? <laughs> and we have another flappy bird there. That's a newer version. What color is it? It's mm -hmm. tan. It's on mm -hmm. the left. Oh, right yeah, there. Oh, and it feels so nice. Mm -hmm. Show us how that works. Well, this is made of velour paper sort of like velvet has the feel. And I think everyone just about has seen the flapping bird, that, that that is traditional. But this is a newer one. Would you like to give that a try? Try it, Robert. Just pull the tail gently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really looks like it's going somewhere. Now, you can fold a bird one way, but there's so many variations. A lot of times, a creative folder will come up with a model and pass it on and they the person who it's passed to will come up with a suggestion change it a little bit and um, come up with some beautiful models well a few times that I've taken a book and tried to follow I haven't gotten much further than a boat <laughs> <laughs> oh there are many books on it yes would you like to guess how many books mrs. Truett has on origami since she's been collecting. 20. Keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting close. 150. 
couldn't be much closer, could she? <laughs> no, 154 right now, but I'm always adding to the, the books. Robert? And they're in five languages. Five? Too. Well, let's see, I've got him backwards. Oh, I would like to mention that you don't have to read and understand these languages. Because you can see the pictures? Well, oh, the, the symbols. You uh, learn what an arrow means, what a da dotted line means, what a dash and dot means. And they're working on an international system now that will simplify. Each country does have a little, you know, a little different uh, method. But... Um, they're more or less, we, well, I correspond with people around the world who do origami. Have you guessed what this is, Robert? What's black and furry and flies around at night? And it's not a bird. And it's very valuable to us because it catches lots of insects and it sleeps upside down. That? Right. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be patting it if it were really alive. <laughs> That's a really nice bat and he's made out of that furry paper too velour i make a lot of those at halloween time <laughs> naturally oh. it helps you study nature uh when i teach at the schools i try to stress that they you know pick up some of their nature books if we're folding a particular animal and study their habits their mm -hmm. coloring and their um you know think different things they would do so they can fold them more natural Here's one of my favorite birds, and you, you go from just individual animals into a scene, sort of. Yes. Right. This, of course, is your tree, a tree, which is a very simple. Some of your most beautiful models are your very simple models. Recognize that, Faye? Can you see mm -hmm. who's sitting in the tree? Yeah. All right. <laughs> of course, that's two pieces of paper, but there's no cutting. And there really are owls that color. Little screech owls are exactly that color, reddish. Let's see. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. This is true, it's scenes. What state does that remind you of? Well, first of all, what are the animals? Things. Well, they're a little bigger than shrimp. I believe um, we have a shrimp there somewhere. Lobsters? Uh, yeah, yeah, right, lobsters. And this is a lobster trap, and we have one state in the United States. Maine? Right. right. <laughs> That's where I picked up my lobster trap, is in Maine. So she has one lobster in the trap and two that are smart enough to stay, <laughs> stay outside. <laughs> That's really nice. Well, did you? Is there something fairly simple you could show Faye and Robert how to make? Yeah, today? I thought I'd show them how to make a boutonniere, a flower that they can wear and possibly give to the mother. This, by the way, is one that I'll be teaching at a lot of the schools and libraries. It's a do nice, have, easy model. Do you have a sample here? Uh, hmm. yes. These. I think. These here. Oh, the, oh, yeah, nice. This be it. This is a tissue paper, but we're going to use a little heavier paper. This also would be attractive on a um, note card. You want to oh, make a yes. little card or on a present, on okay. right? Origami can be very useful for different things. So what do you need? All right, now reach across. You. Are you going to fold with us? Well, I'm very clumsy, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we'll start with the leaf. Now, turn your paper over. In origami, the, the important things are neatness. You must be neat. And sharp creasing. When you crease, use the back of your thumb to run across it. Now, we're going to fold the paper in half to form a triangle. Now, try to get your points nice and neat. Origami takes time. But if you compare it to other crafts, it's a pretty fast craft because you come up with your results in a very short length of time. And all you need is paper. Work on the top of the table. I think you may find it a little easier. Right, it's a very inexpensive hobby. Except when you get invited to conventions <laughs> in London. <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Stewart went to London to a 
meeting where everybody was interested in origami. Isn't that exciting? People from yeah. around the world attend that <laughs> just to learn new folds, compare ideas. Okay? Open it up. Now, you want to fold one of the edges to the center crease line. That's it. Try to watch your point, that your point's nice and neat. That's it. I use your thumb, mostly because you can apply more pressure with your thumb. The opposite side is also hold it to the center. Or are you watching? <laughs> Maybe she'd like to try it. <laughs> he likes to chew on that one. Now, the first time around, it's a little hard. The second time around, it's getting easy. And the third time, <laughs> got <Snap>. it made. <laughs> right. I always encourage making at least two of a model. Yeah. All right. Now, the top part, where you can see your white, fold in to your center crease line. Take this white part and fold it in. That's it, Robert. You have it fine. Try to pull it out a little bit. In other words, keep it right along the crease. Okay? And then repeat that on the opposite side. Fold it. This is going to be the leaf part. This right? will be the leaf. Now, place it so the section you have just folded is closest to you, okay? Now, fold it in half, enclosing what you have just folded. You can see the leaf now starting to form. Mm -hmm. Then, the lower portion you fold Over. That's it. Try to fold your bottom over a little more, Robert. Now, on here, Faye. Okay, it's this bottom side. You want to fold straight on this the side. Turn it over and again fold to the side. Let's see, Robert, I can't quite, um, well, let me just. Yeah, that was a tricky part, Robert. I had trouble. Should be this mm -hmm. edge, should rest on this edge. I think you fold it more or less the middle. Now you want to turn it over and take this edge and fold it over here. All right, now you can see you have your leaf and you have a little pocket here where after we make the flower, we can insert it. Okay. So, so far, so good. Whatever. <laughs> Take a purple, red, orange, whatever color you think you might like your flower. Okay. I guess you have orange. <laughs> now, this time, let's place the paper with the color side up. And we'll fold it in half to form a rectangle this time. And crease it sharply. Open it up, fold it once again in half the opposite way, crease it. When you open it, you'll see you have four squares there. Okay. Turn your paper over so you have your white side facing you or your wrong side. This time, fold it diagonally, and you will have a triangle. Oh, you're really fast on that one, Robert. <laughs> Open it up and fold it once again diagonally. This time you fold it an X shape. Okay. Now, we're going to form what is called a preliminary base. Lots of origami is on preliminary basis. It's a starting base. Hold your paper with the white side up. That's it, push your center up. 
stop it, and hold it by two opposite points. Bring your points together. Then take your opposite hand and push it together, and you'll have a square. Take your hand on top. Well, turn it over. That's it. Now, over top. There. Okay. Now, if you set it down and you lift the corner and peek under, you should see that it's meeting. Does yours meet? Okay. Fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, place your model. We'll call it a model now. So your points are furthest away from you. In other words, turn it around so your points are at the top. Turn your model around, Robert, but fold this back up. Leave that up. Okay. Now, you want to take this folded edge and fold it to the center, crease line. Now, that would be this. Let me reach across. Now, right here, Robert. Right. Fold that over to the center crease line. Fine. Now, make sure that it rests right on the crease line. Now, the opposite side will meet. Okay. Crease it firmly. Now, turn it over and fold the two sides to the center. And we're almost complete. We have one more step. Let's say that's it. I think you see that now. Good. Now, let's fold. Hold. Put your finger on the point. Fold your flower down almost, but not quite all the way to the bottom, to the point. See, I'm holding that. I'm folding it almost to the bottom. Crease it. Now, let's open the flower up. I keep my finger on the point and then pull my petals apart and sort of squash them my down. Oh, goodness. Looks just like the lunch. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Let's see how you open. Let's see. Open your top and open your bottom. That's it. Now, you want to sort of squash these. There you go. Then all you have to do is insert it. Into the little pocket. Beautiful. Whichever side you want. Well. Take a little pin and pin it on. May I borrow your pin? I think I'll put mine yeah, right on. I have on. a few on the oh, table oh, there oh. also. Yeah. But this is a very simple, basic model. I, I like to teach it because the children can give it to the mother yeah. or put it on a package. Oh, but yeah, there are many good. flowers that are folded from origami. There's a pin, and you can take that one. Oh, you already have one. Well, you said uh, that magicians could do tricks with origami, or use, or knew how to do paper folding. Oh yes. And you have a couple of a uh, magic, magic hat. And what was the color? Oh, here's your other magic hat. Yeah. Well, this is called <laughs> Bunny Bill. Now this one is folded from a dollar, and this is folded from a black and white piece of paper. No. Oh. And watch children. You just <laughs> press the magician's hat and then oh. magic bunny pops up. <laughs> That's an action model. Now of course there's no cutting, it's just to fold it. And your money's still good if you need it and have to unfold it. That's my problem. I keep unfolding it. <laughs> and this is cute. Oh, awesome. the elephant. Yeah. Also made out of a dollar. Oh, you can fold initials. Lots of things in a dollar bill. I think that interests the adults quite a bit. The money <laughs> folds. Things you can do with money. Yeah. Faye, didn't you say you had made a monkey once? Yeah. In school, let me see. You had a oh, here's a scene. Yeah. With a monkey. More or less a jungle. Yeah. Let's see. Is that like the one you made? Yeah. No. That's How about this one? I guess there are various kinds of monkeys. <laughs> oh yeah. This. Now, oh. some of them are what you call a compound model, where you would use two pieces of paper to mm -hmm. forming. Like the elephant, he yeah. is a compound. Oh, is and the rhinoceros. rhinoceros. I'm going to have a little parade here of all the animals that I can find. <laughs> the little elephant and the big spider. 
apologies. Oh yes, the frog. Well, that's a traditional model that Japanese have been folding that for many, many years. A frog, a lily pad, and a water lily. That's beautiful. And here's another animal, the special kind of fish called a, you call it a ray or a skate? I call oh, it a stingray. A stingray. Mm -hmm. You can fold anything. Oh, here's the shrimp he was hiding. <laughs> You want to put him over there at the beginning, Robert? If he'll, if he'll stand up and wave his antennae at you. And then here's a beautiful sea turtle. The green sea turtle. Well, what do you think of Mrs. Truett and all the things that she can do? <laughs> well, well that's the nice thing about origami. Anybody can do it. I don't think it's going to oh, stand up. Well, for we'll me. have to prop it up with something. Maybe put this in the back. Okay. I like the jungle scene. Maybe it'll make Aurora feel like it. Well, maybe I'll just hold it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and try to pin it on yeah. there. Right. So, do you think? Where do you think you could go if you got home and decided you really wanted to do some more paper folding and you couldn't find Mrs. Truett? Where would you go to get some help? To the library. Right. And I understand that once Mrs. Truett has been to a library, that there aren't any books about origami on the shelves after she goes because everybody rushes and wants to borrow a book and take it home and, and try it because it is such fun. And when people enjoy their hobby, you can tell, can't you? Because <laughs> they enjoy sharing it with other people. Well, I think and Baltimore has really had a spurge on paper folding. Yes. And I'm glad that you said that you really didn't have to have the special paper, that you can use tissue paper or what's this fuzzy kind called? Velour, the velour paper. The velour mm -hmm. that the bat's made out of. You would probably have to get that at an art supply store. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming, Mrs. Oh, Truett. Oh, glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you could stop by today and learn more about origami and hope you get a chance to try some. Goodbye. This program was made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Pre-recorded in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.